Hey guys, welcome back to Willpower Garage. Today we're working on a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited and we're going to replace the rear pads and rotors. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so if you've seen my other videos on front brake jobs or rear brake jobs for that matter, uh, you know they're relatively straightforward, um, especially a disc brake setup with, like this is. Uh, some rear brake systems are drum brakes. The only thing that is drum in this setup is the emergency brake, which is housed in this hat here, but we're not gonna worry about that. We are gonna replace the rotor I always recommend replacing the rotor with the pads. Um, there are very few places these days that will cut a used rotor anymore. Um, you know, it, it's just the amount of money you would spend somebody to cut them. It's not much more to just buy a new rotor. I don't like putting just new pads on an old rotor. For instances like this, this rotor has a lot of heat marks in it meaning that this rotor got really hot. It also has a groove here in the middle. Um, you know, a lot of these markings and stuff on the rotor will lead to noise when you stop, poor brake performance, vibration or pulsation in the brake pedal. So for the extra couple hundred dollars, um, just go ahead and replace the rotors anyway. Um, if you're watching this video, you're probably doing it yourself. Um, so you're already saving money. Use that save money, replace the rotor. I can't emphasize it enough. All right, with that lecture done, basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove the caliber. We're gonna remove the caliber bracket um, because on this vehicle, you have to remove it to get the rotor out. A um, Couple of things I wanna point out. Chrysler products like to use these little rubber O-rings to hold the rotor to the hub. Um, you know, you don't want to damage it. It is pretty useful to keep the, the rotor where it needs to be, especially when you're doing the brakes. So when you remove this, just be careful you don't tear or rip it. Uh, I use a small pick tool to get behind it and get the O-ring out, out, of, out of the way. First, I'm going to remove this anti-rattle spring. Uh, the way I do that is I just put a flat blade screwdriver between here to pry or create some leverage this way so I can get this bracket out of the way. Be careful, it is a spring. It does have some tension where it's pushing on here. Um, not to the point where it's gonna be too dangerous, but you don't want it flinging or flying into you. Uh, so just be careful when you take this off. Next, we're gonna remove the caliber. Now there are little dust covers that cover the slides. You're gonna remove these. As you can see, I just did it with my fingers. There's one on the top as well as the bottom. And the bolts that hold the caliber to the caliber bracket are actually a seven millimeter Allen key. Uh, this in particular is an Allen socket, so I can get in there to remove that. Uh, but before I even remove the caliber or the spring, what I like to do is take a flat blade screwdriver, I put it in between the rotor and the caliper and basically just pry it away from the rotor like so. Once I get it that far I'll push it back in and then again I'll put the screwdriver between the pad and the rotor and basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to compress the piston now. And the reason is not everyone has a seat clamp to be able to compress the piston or any kind of clamp for that matter to get it in. There are special tools, which is basically a threaded rod with a plate. You turn it in and it'll push the piston in. Um, but you know, a flat blade screwdriver works pretty well for this and it gets it pretty close to being all the way in. So I like to do that first before I remove the caliber. But from there, now I'm going to remove the spring. And like I said, we're gonna pry in a little bit like this and get the spring out of the way. Now that that's off, now I'm gonna remove the caliper. 
Like I said, this is a seven millimeter Allen. There's a bolt on the top as well as the bottom. Uh, usually when I take these out, or loosen them I should say, I like to take them all the way out. And the reason, the reason being is this is actually a slide or a guide pin. This is what the caliber is moving on. And you want to inspect it. You want to make sure that everything's smooth. There's no rust or anything on it. And when you put it back in, you're going to put a little grease on this so it moves freely. So that's the top one. And get the bottom one out. Before I take this off, I want to remind everyone that's watched my channel before, make sure you don't let this caliber bracket hang off that hose. Either place it up here somehow, or get some kind of you know, zip tie, bungee cord, seat belt, your belt, shoestring, I don't care, just use something. Tie this caliber up so it's not hanging on the hose. You damage the hose. Um, you can actually collapse it on the inside, brake fluid will go one way, but it won't return the other way and it'll keep the, the caliber pushing pressure on the brake rotor. So just make sure you have that guy set up some way so there's no pressure on the hose. Okay, so now to get the rotor off, I need to get this bracket out of the way. And that bracket's held on with two 18 millimeter bolts on the back side. As you can see, that's one of the 18 millimeter bolts. There's the second one there. We have to remove both these bolts to get this bracket here off before we can remove the rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take those guys off now. All right, so this is the O-ring I was telling you guys earlier about. Basically what I try to do is I try to get just behind this thing so I can get hooked behind it and you guys can see that and get this out now a lot of times these rotors will still be stuck to the hub I'm going to replace the rotor so I'm not worried about damaging it right I'm not worried about the surface at all the easiest way to get a rotor off that is stuck like this is to hit the machine surface area with a hammer something heavy a dead blow um, but before you do that, you must make sure that you have this O-ring off, otherwise it'll never come off. So you can see I got the rotor off. I got a little rust in here. This is the e-brake uh, shoes on the inside. Like I said, we don't have to worry about those. I could tell from looking at both the pads and the inside of the rotor that these, this e-brake has probably never been used, uh, which is not uncommon. I mean, this is an automatic, uh, so you don't really need to use the e-brake as much as you would with a standard shift, I assume. Um, but like I said, we don't really need to worry about this. Just make sure nothing's loose. Everything looks like it's in good shape. But from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the surface of the hub itself. We wanna make sure all the rust any kind of scale uh, buildup is removed. Uh, the reasoning is you want the new rotor to sit flat as can be against this hub. If it's off a little bit, you can get uh, vibrations in the pedal just the same. So you want to clean this all up, dry it all off nice with brake clean. Uh, as well as the caliber, you want to clean both sides here. Never mind the spider web that is there. Uh, but you want to use like a wire brush clean off this, break clean to clean it off, as well as the piston here. Uh, again, wire brush, some brake clean, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, the other thing we're going to clean up is the caliber bracket. You can see from those shiny areas here, this is where the pads were, top and bottom. Uh, so you want those areas to be nice and clean because we are going to apply some lubricant to them before we put this back on um, onto the spindle here or knuckle or whatever you call it in the rear uh, so that you don't apply that same lubricant to the rotor once the rotor is in place. 
So right now I'm going to clean everything up and then start putting new stuff on. Okay guys, a couple of quick notes. Uh, when you buy a new rotor, a lot of times it has some kind of wax coating or an oil or grease coating on the surface. The reason for that is just to protect it uh, during storage and shipping. Uh, but before you install this, you want to take a clean rag, some brake clean. Uh, this is the one I like to use. It dries quick, uh, it doesn't leave a residue, and it works really well. Basically, you spray the rotor surface down and just give it a good wipe up. You don't need to worry about the hat itself, uh, but if you want to clean it off just so the grease doesn't get down on the surface itself, that's fine. Uh, these in particular are painted. It's supposed to protect the rotor a little longer. I don't know if it really matters, but make sure you do the backside as well. Yes, there is obviously a pad that is riding on there. And then, since this is a drum brake setup as well for the e-brake, I usually wipe that down. The other thing I want to point out is, this is the caliber bracket. As you can see, I already have it cleaned up. Uh, I do want to apply some lubricant to that, and I like to do it now before uh, it goes onto the car. And the reason being is I can get to a lot of these areas now much easier than if this bracket was installed on the car with the rotor in place. I don't want to get all this lubricant on the rotor. Um, you know, we just spent time to clean up all that grease. Um, but basically, you just apply this to the area where the pad is moving. Doesn't have to be a lot, just enough so the pad can move freely. It also prevents this thing from rusting up so you don't have issues as the pad wears. Uh, because, you know, as you know, the pads are going to be there for a while. So, the other thing I want to point out is, this is the old set of pads from the driver's side. Uh, and I emphasize driver's side because of the location of the squealer. The reason for this device is, as the pad wears, this will make contact with the rotor and make a squealing noise or kind of scraping noise to notify you that the pads are getting low and you need to replace them. They put this on either the top or the bottom. You know, it depends on which side of the car you're looking at. Uh, like I said, this is the outer pad on the driver's side. So this pad sits something like this. So this tab is up. So I want to make sure when I grab my new pad, it also has a tab that's facing up. The inner pads don't matter. They both have uh, just a spring to lock them into the caliber itself. Uh, the other thing I want to uh, mention is this is a premium set of pads. So these have a backing material on them. Some people like to put uh, lubricant on the areas where this sits against the piston itself. I find that these, these premium sort of backers and everything have enough lubricant you know, sort of designed in there that you don't need to put anything uh, extra on them. Same with the pads on where they're sliding since I put it on the bracket itself. So now that I have my driver side set of uh, pads here and my rotor all cleaned up, we're gonna install this stuff in the reverse order we took it off. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our new rotor on, followed by the caliber bracket, pads, and then the caliber. As you can see here, I've got my hub all cleaned up don't have to go crazy you don't need to clean the inside it's really just the area where the rotor sits against the hub same with the caliber too you don't need to clean the whole caliber you just need to clean the areas where the pads are going so i'm going to grab the new rotor that we cleaned up there's no special way this needs to go on just make sure it is in all the way you might have some issues because of the e-brake drum from there, we're going to reinstall the O-ring that we took off. Like I said, it just sits in that groove. We'll get that on there. Make sure it's in the groove. Caliber, is, I mean, the rotor is on all the way. Next, we're going to install our caliber bracket. You don't need to put anything on to 
the caliber bracket bolts, but these bolts get torqued down to 89 foot pounds. So first you want to make sure you run these down by hand. Okay, with my torque wrench set to 89 foot-pounds, I'm going to torque these up. Followed by our pads. Make sure you put the outer pad in, right location, caliper pad. Make sure your hose is not twisted. And then, assuming you have your caliper tracked all the way, it should slide on just like that. So the caliper slides, I like to use just a little silicone based lubricant on them. Like I said, you clean these up, make sure everything is good. There's no heavy rust, corrosion on them. Those get reinstalled in the caliper. Run these down with the ratchet. And once I have these run down, these get torqued down to 32 foot pounds. Okay, and then last but not least, we're going to put a new spring on. Uh, the only reason I'm changing the spring is because it came in the brake pad set. Basically, it goes back on the way it came off. And that's basically it. That's your whole complete rear brake setup. All right, guys. As you can see, doing the rear brakes on this vehicle are just as easy as doing the front brakes. No special tools. Uh, as long as you do those simple tricks like I showed you using the flat blade screwdriver. Uh, try the caliper so you don't need to use a special clamp uh, to get the, the caliper reset. Um, just follow along those steps. Make sure you lubricate the caliper slides. Make sure they're clean, uh, not full of rust or anything. Lubricate those. Lubricate the caliber bracket for the new pads, make sure the pads are oriented in the proper way for the squealer, and then make sure the mating surface of the rotor is nice and clean, free of dirt, grease, and everything else. So from here, I'm going to jump to the passenger side, which is exactly the same as the driver's side, which is why I'm not showing you it on camera, there's no need, you would just be watching me do the same thing again. Um, but with that being said, I want to thank you guys for always watching. If you're new here, thanks for coming by. Um, I ask everyone, please subscribe, give me a big thumbs up, and drop me a comment below. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, uh, I'll do my very best to try to answer that question. Um, and uh, yeah, as always, thanks guys. See you next time. Bye.